Bravo. So yeah, this whole time I've just been doing small dives, um, mainly targeting yellow jacks. This is a pretty overfished spot, but since I haven't been here for over two years, I was trying to see if it changed. It's beautiful out, a little eastward wind. Oh. I haven't really been seeing much uh, that's worth shooting besides those yellow jacks. You know, they're great eating sashimi, whatever you want. Uh, sometimes even taco, but I prefer them as sashimi. So I'll probably make some tonight and enjoy that. I'ma take the team. We're gonna be hot, hot like steam. I just got the dreams. I don't know what you mean. It's all funny to the food. I get 50 to my cheek. start heading back in shore slowly see if there's any other fish on the way but I've got enough fish for myself and a, to give to some friends <laughs> So while I am going to be filleting the fish, I'll be talking a little bit about why it's so important to know these regulations and to at least be informed. Um, a lot of our spear fishermen, I mean, a lot of us, like, it's not, like, we can't get food elsewhere, but there's something about getting...
getting your own food and especially in a time like now where every time you leave the house it's a risk I know that if I go to the ocean I'll be able to provide for myself and those around me without having to put myself and them at greater risk by going to grocery stores or being in populated areas um by the way over here you see me with a spoon scooping out the meat you can do this in response to a bad fillet job on accident or whatever it is but you can actually use this meat to go make uh, spicy wraps or rolls or whatever so for most of the fillet i always end up with four parts um it would go the meat of the fillets the bones the wings and the head the head and the bones are really good for soup and you'll see right here that there is a decent amount of meat hidden in the head not always this much but there's still a decent amount that gelatin you see in the bones if you bake it before you cook with it it will be very rich flavor in your broth right there there's a bone the rib cage this is the way i fillet sometimes and you kind of want to go up and down like a stairway you know if you can't go any more forward um, go a little down just grab us you know go through the meat a little bit um, you save meat by doing this rather than just cutting out the rib cage completely and here I just segmented out into sashimi grade pieces and what I would use for tacos cooking anything that's not you know supposed to be perfectly cut and you can see the the different parts the belly and the upper body of the lesser amberjack to start the recipes off we're going to do something simple we're going to make ceviche you just need your, your fish fillet uh, this will help you gauge it i'm using one fillet of acero mackerel you're going to need your tomatoes your onions your cilantro your limes and lemon uh, cut it into one inch pieces get you know about for this size of fish, I did two limes, one lemon, uh, about two tomatoes, a nice decent chunk of a onion. Um, I didn't have any cilantro, but that's okay. Still came out great. And the amount of time you let it sit in the acid cooks at a different amount. So if you want a medium rare, if you want it, you know, well done, whatever it is, you can gauge and eat it at that moment. Now this was a simple ceviche recipe, but if you really want to up the um, the quality and the taste of the ceviche search up on google leche del tigre i'll write it right at the um, bottom of this video i'll get back to the ceviche in a little bit but right now we're going to make some carpaccio or you know my version of it so it's pretty simple it's just some spring onions the uh, fish and some ponzu ponzu is like a citrus uh, sauce that comes from a well, citrus fruit uh, it's Japanese. It tastes amazing. It's really refreshing. Um, and you know, you just want to cut your fish thinly, spread it around, and just enjoy it. It can be a nice little appetizer. Spread some sesame seeds on it. I take the leftover ponzu from eating um, and I poured it into the ceviche and I put some salt and pepper in there. You know, just basic things you can customize yourself. Uh, there's no wrong way to make ceviche. You know, and then I had to make my own tortilla chips because we didn't have any. You can oven bake the tortillas chips at 350 and just flip them every once in a while till you get them nice and crispy. Okay, so this next recipe is going to be based off of one of my earlier videos. It was the lobster catch and cook. Um, at the top right, it'll be linked over there, so go ahead and click that to see how to make the broth. It's a very mild broth for this reason. It's very versatile, so I just start warming up the broth. What you saw me crunching up was seaweed. Get your noodles ready, uh, get your miso paste ready, and your dried mushrooms. So once the broth is warm, you can toss in the dried mushrooms, and the seaweed uh, will expand a lot, so don't toss in a lot. Um, I cook the noodles, I put it in the bottom of the bowl, I go check on the broth, you know, and I end up cutting the mushrooms. I forgot to cut them at the beginning. Um, I stir in my miso paste. Some people, you know, do it a little more traditionally, you know, scoop uh, broth onto a spoon and slowly dilute it. But overall, you know, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, and it's very delicious, very, you know, versatile meal. You can simplify it. You can just do miso broth naturally you can do a breakfast meal like this this, one, this is my breakfast so uh, there's a lot of ways you can work with this broth and broth is easily frozen so for times like now go ahead and do that for yourself and be prepared 
So a lot of people that go spearfishing are kind of finding it difficult to go out. They don't know if they're going to get fined. They don't know where they're going to be able to go. Um, all these state executive orders that keep coming out, um, they are either vague or they contradict what was previously said. And law enforcement is doing their best to work with what they're given the lack of you know regularity and completely new things that just keep coming out overnight but obviously the main one that we know is the executive order that happened on March 20th which was closing beaches and that is executive order number 2070 um, and that happened almost a month ago since then there are several other important executive orders to focus on as you can see, you know, in part of this video, I was actually going spearfishing um, on executive order number 2091. Essential activities are including hunting and fishing, along with other ones, uh, as well as I'm going to include the link for all of these inside of the bio. Uh, they have every single executive order listed in order. Um, release date and then I'm going to specifically link to the ones I'm talking about here which is 2070, 2091, 2092, and 2090. These four are kind of really the most relevant ones for what we are doing. So on the executive order 2090 after 2070, I mean that's a lot of executive orders since then, a lot has happened. Um, the initial reason for these beaches being closed was actually the spring breakers that were having, you know, crazy parties on the beaches and, and the governor was really slow to react, partially due to the fact that businesses rely on them. But the pandemic really should have um, superseded that. So he shut down all the beaches and that was almost a month ago. Um, now on executive order number 2090, this is close to when the 2070 executive order closing the beaches is supposed to expire. He continued it. This was on March 31st of 2020. He says here, um, whereas on March 20, 2020, I issued executive order 2070, this is DeSanti, directing the closure of beaches in Broward County and Palm Beach County. And recognizing that the executive order 2070 expires on March 31st, 2020, Barb County and Palm Beach County seek to have the restrictions related to beach closures extended. So this, this is actually the counties requesting for the governor to extend the beach lockdowns. This one says Barb County and Palm Beach County beaches shall remain closed. Um, and then in the second section, you talk, it talks about the Barb County and the Palm Beach County administrators shall have the ability to enforce. So the police departments for each of these counties, relax, modify, or remove these beach closers as warranted, pursuant to the directives and parameters set forth in Executive Order 2068. Practically, all he's saying is he's giving the power to the local governments to enforce law regulations, whether they give citations or whether they just try and make you go home. Um, they're going to be able to relax the beach close downs if they wanted to, or completely get rid of them and allow people to go to the beach um, you know, so forth. So this was March 31st, and that was talking about the beach shutdown. Now we go over to Executive Order 2091. I just wanted to say this because a lot of people at home maybe have family members nearby or something like that who are senior citizens. The first section, safer at home, senior citizens and individuals with a significant underlying medical condition uh, shall stay at home. That's kind of the whole reason why we like to go spearfishing. It's not just for ourselves, but we also get to provide food for our neighbors, our friends. These are the, exactly the people that we would be helping if we could go to the ocean rather than go to the grocery store where we have a greater chance of getting infected. Um, and in part two of section one, he says, all persons in Florida shall limit their movements and personal interactions outside of their home to only those necessary to obtain or provide essential services or conduct essential activities. I'll get to this in a bit. When we're looking at section three, which speaks about the central activities, it's broken down into several parts where it says participating in recreational activities consistent with social distancing guidelines. Guidelines, that's you know, groups fewer than 10. I think that's changed to smaller now, but uh, still you know, six feet apart, all these basic things. With following those guidelines, 
but um, you should be able to walk, bike, hike, go fishing, hunting, running, or swimming for that segment. It says caring for or otherwise assisting a loved one or friend, which I connect back to the first part. And we're going to get on to section number four, where he says that this order, this 2092-2091 order, shall supersede any conflicting official action or order issued by local officials in response to COVID-19, but only to the extent that such action or order allows essential services or essential activities prohibited by this executive order. And this order is effective starting midnight on April 3rd and it shall expire on April 30th where it can be extended just like the last one. Now the reason this third one is important even though it's just one page um, it specifically states that in section one of this new um, executive order 2092 um, section four of executive order 2091 should read as follows this order shall supersede any conflicting official action or order issued by local officials in response to COVID-19. And this is just to amend the previous um, executive order just to clarify that small bit. But frankly, what I'm trying to get at is the fact that beaches are closed. This is requested by the local government that has requested it from Governor DeSanti, and he has gone ahead and extended this beach closure. The problem with this is that it also conflicts with essential activities, which both in 2091 and 2092 he says that the order shall supersede any conflicting official action or order issued by local officials. So the police officers that are on the beaches are local officials. So if you are going to the beach for hunting or, you know, and the spearfishing, fishing, things like that, and you're abiding by the guidelines to stay far apart from each other in small groups, and you should be fine. Although the police officers aren't often familiar with any fishing regulations or changes that specifically target fishing, not as many know about that. Once again, these cops, they're regular people, they have family getting you know on the front line, they have friends getting sick from this disease, so we need to be compassionate and understanding that we're not the only ones going through this, so are the police officers. So if a police officer does approach you, bring this up, bring up these four documents, uh, 2070, shutting down the beaches, uh, 2090, extending the beach shutdown, 2091, listing essential activities, including fishing and hunting, and you know, part of 2091 was also saying that this supersedes all prior local official um, you know, regulations, uh, if they coincide. And then 2092, 2092, which just kind of revamps and amends that 2091 one. Um, so from my perspective, I should be allowed to go to the beach spearfishing. And if you'd seen this video, then you, you can see I did that. Um, I didn't exactly have too much trouble with the police officers. I'm not encouraging everyone to go swarm the beaches, but be respectful, go out, you know, quick trip, go get what you need, go home. Um, it, it is, in my opinion, much safer than going to the grocery store, much more sustainable on top of that. And I mean, you know, I, I get some sanity back because I'm going crazy staying in here. Uh, I get to swim, get to see a beautiful sunrise, get to be outdoors for a little bit, and I'm not contributing to the spread of coronavirus. Now, if these officials do come to you and do try to speak to you, I do recommend to have these documents printed and just talk to them. Keep it safe distant, pass it over to them, whatever, read it to them, maybe they already know what it is, and just talk to them. Explain to them your situation, that you're trying to go get fish so you don't have to go to the grocery store, which long lines, and yes, a lot of these places are spacing out the people going in, but it's not perfect, and you're still exposing yourself. I mean, you literally have to wear a mask to go anywhere now. I don't have a chance of contracting that in the water, in the ocean. Um, all I know is that this is essential to who I am, this is essential to what I do, and this is essential to, you know, all of this. I mean, I, I don't want to go to the grocery stores. I went spearfishing, I got the fish, cooked it up, and now I'm feeding my family and some friends for a couple days, and hopefully I'll be able to go out again and do it soon. These are really difficult times. Don't make anyone's lives more difficult than they need to be. Um, you're not here to fight 
the officials, you're here to talk to them, find out what they know, maybe educate them so that if someone else comes by, like another spirit fisherman, that they won't have to deal with what you dealt with, or, you know, maybe he'll just explain, hey, look, I'm just going to go out there, I'm going to catch a couple of fish, and I'm going to go immediately home. Try your best to be communicative. And, I mean, if there's one moral, all this is showing that we're all in it together. So, let's see how that goes. And hopefully you guys got to enjoy the rest of the video and got some information. And feel free to always research your own stuff. Double check all the facts you have. And I'm no lawyer. I'm, I don't work in, you know, any of these things. I just know that you do have access to these public, public records. And you can do your own research. Don't go buy newspapers. Search things up yourself. And this goes for all articles going on now. Don't read and trust and you know, do your own research. Um, if anything changes or if you guys notice anything I said that was incorrect, please comment. Let me know. Um, I probably won't be able to make a response video. I'll probably comment back. And thank you for you know educating me. But for the most part, I feel like for these essential activities, we are allowed to go to the ocean. Are the police officers aware of this? I don't think so because of the confusion about everything. They're all stressed out about losing friends and family and they themselves getting it. Um, they're stressed out by all these new regulations coming out day and night. I mean, constantly and contradicting each other. So I don't think that they're going to know about this. So they will try and stop you most likely and then just talk to them, show them these documents, print them out, keep them in your car. If you see a police officer one day and you see him relax, you know, Approach him safely, don't get too close, and just ask him a question. You know, running by officials. I tried asking the, the cop on the beach, but he just didn't care about me after a while. He kind of realized I was just going to go spearfishing or something, and he just disappeared. It's funny. Um, I am waiting for one of those cops to drive by again so I can ask him the question. Um, down pass by. I've been standing on the shore where I'm way more visible than in there. They seem to notice me when I'm in the water but not out here. Well, let's see if I can get them to come to me and see. If not, I might go out. Um, I would have liked to speak to him but you know so far I, I was happy I got to go out and if there are any legal repercussions for this we'll I don't even know what to say about that because everything is so confusing. I don't know what they would persecute me for. So I'm pretty sure I'm okay. Pretty sure you'll be okay. Just be prepared. Be safe. And hope everyone's okay.